next year. Okay, so now we're looking at the use, using the trig ratios. Okay, you may have heard of this guy. Can you move up so there's no empty desk in front of you there? His name's Pythagoras. Now, Pythagoras is used a lot in trig, obviously, but now we're back to looking at points in a circle. And any point in a circle can be broken down to, so here we are, can be broken down into x and y. Now, do you see how this is x? Because that's how far we are from the 0, 0, the origin. And do you see the distance y here? Right, that's this distance, right? Same one. And then we have this thing called r. Now, do you see as you go around, no matter if I put a point here, do you see that x and y change? Do you ever see how x and y would change if I put it over there? Y is a lot bigger now, isn't it? X is a lot smaller. What happens to R? It's good. Now, what about if I put and had a point over here? What can you tell me about X, Y, and R? R is the same. X and Y change. Can you tell me anything? X changes. How does X change? It becomes negative, does it not? And Y is? Positive still. And R is? What sign would R be? Positive. X and Y will change depending on the coordinate on uh, which uh, quadrant you're in. R is always positive. Now, here's, that's a little tidbit that in three months you may forget. Some people, even if I said sequences and series to them right now, they'd be like, huh, what's that? We never did those this year, did we? So, remember that X and Y will change depending on what quadrant you're in, but R is always positive. And instead of using a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we're going to use x squared plus y squared equals r squared, because that is more applicable to the unit circle. Now, do you still see that it is the same formula, that just the variables change? Because remember that if you're right here, right, opposite the angle, do you see how that's y? And adjacent to this angle is x and the hypotenuse, or C, or now R, is along the side, and it is across from the right angle. Right? You guys remember all that stuff from last year, opposite Jason hypotenuse? Now it's going to be X, Y, R. Okay? Now, so I don't know how many times I will say that, but I will always point out that R has to be greater or equal to zero. Okay? Why is it, or greater than zero, sorry. Why can our, can the radius of a wheel ever be zero? Okay, think of that wheel. Can you think of the wheel with a radius zero? It would not be big, would it? Okay, so obviously the radius has to be greater than zero because if it's zero radius, it would have zero circumference as well, right? Okay, now let's uh, let's talk about what do we need this x thingy, y thingy. Okay, so here's a point, negative 5, 12, and the terminal arm of angle. So this is on the rotation angle, and it says we want to find out the exact distance from the origin. Exact distance from the origin would be r. We are looking for R, okay? Distance from the origin is R. That's your spokes of a tire, right? So, or spokes of a rim of a tire. So then if we have, okay, now me, it's picture, picture, picture. I will always do a picture first. 
If I taught it without a picture, I might as well not teach it at all. Because I might get two of you, maybe. Okay? The rest of you would be just looking at me like, oh man, I have no idea what this guy's talking about. Okay? So you're going to look at me that way anyway. Negative 512, where would I be? Quadrant 2. See where x is? Negative. So, now you don't have to be like perfect, but let's call that negative 512. Okay? Do you see why? Because x is negative 5, y is 12. Okay? Now, it is asking for this. So, if I did this, okay, this would be negative 5, and this would be 12. Now, the first thing you're going to look at have a negative distance, right? But I'm doing the negative 5 because it's showing me that I'm in the right quadrant as well. That's more for me, okay? The negative, I'm in quadrant 2, and the 5 says that's how big that side is. Now, I am looking for R. So what if I had this? R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. Okay? Now, R equals plus or minus negative 5 squared plus 12 squared. Now, what did I say to put if you leave out the brackets? Anyone remember what I said to put? You're supposed to draw an arrow and say something right there. Anyone remember that? No? Shane, do you remember that? Yeah, just say, I forgot to put the bracket, so please mark this wrong. Okay? But it's weird. A lot of you guys didn't write that there. How come? You didn't put the brackets. Because I had so many people would say that is negative 25 there. Now, can someone give me an example of something squared that equals a negative number? Okay, don't put up your hand because you're going to be very embarrassed. So many of you, now so many of you would be more than zero, but so many of you had negative 25 plus 144. That's what you did next. Now, will you get the wrong answer if you put negative 25 there? Mm -hmm. So shouldn't you have written that? Now, some of you, I walked around. I mean, I looked at everybody's. Some of you, and then of course I marked them, actually had the brackets, but then when you put them in your calculator, you didn't put the brackets because you got negative 25, okay? So remember, those little things are going to kill you, okay? That is the beast that you're in here for. There's not many other things. Physics is another gooder, right? But you miss one little thing, it's going to go bad, Okay, so, like, here's an example. Give me the most expensive, fastest sports car in the world. What's the fastest sports car in the world? No, it's the Bugatti Veyron, right? Let me take out just one little spark plug. I just want one spark plug out of it. That's it. You can have the whole rest of the car. Okay, go for it. Okay, or can I take just that one little uh, valve screw that's in your uh, stem of your tire? Can I just have that? It's this big. I'll take that out and we'll see how good your car runs. Okay, so Matthew, you could do this giant question, take you a whole page, but you said negative 5 times negative 5 is negative 25, and then you did everything. Okay, math is that beast. You take, you script one little thing, and it all goes bad from there, okay? So, this one, you get R to equal plus or minus 169, okay? Therefore, R equals plus or minus 13. Now, what is R, positive or negative? Why? Because... R is always positive. Now, 
Do you see why it will be applicable to always put plus minus? If you didn't know x in this one, you would have got x as plus or minus 5. How would you know that it was negative 5? How would you know that it's negative 5 in there? Say I knew the r. They told me there, you know, I'm in, because I'm in quadrant 2. Doesn't x have to be negative in quadrant 2? Now, I know some of you are just going to put down 5 if I was to ask you that. And I'm like, did you do the positive negative? No, I don't do that stuff because I'm too awesome. Okay? Well, Mr. Awesome, you got it wrong. So, every single time it's going to be plus minus, and then you will have to decide. Now, R is always positive. X and Y depend on the quadrant. Okay? Okay, now, you know this. Sokotoa, do you remember Sokotoa? Okay, we got so ka toa Okay, now this, this used to be in grade 8 and 9. Now they moved it up to grade 10. But this was one of those first things, and it looks like some little childish thingy that you remember. I'll tell you, all the way to the highest level of geometry course you take at university, you will be using Sokotoa. Okay? So, I know it seems like some childish little saying, but I use Sokotoa all the way through. Anytime some right angle triangle popped up, Sokotoa, right? So, this is something that if you're doing any sort of, uh, you know, geometry or engineering or whatever, triangles, right angle triangles pop up all the time. Okay, all your surveying, you know, when the guys are on the side of the road and they're like doing their, that's all trig, okay? And they're figuring out where they're doing the road and the elevation and all that stuff. Now, the sign is what over what? Hmm? Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. What's cos? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And what is tan? Okay. Now, we're doing x, y, and r's. So, if we go down here, look at this triangle, I'm still going to, I still do this. I still do this in my head. Opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Okay. Because on a test, oh, you would hate to put y over r when you're looking for cos. Okay. Remember those little mistakes. We've got to get rid of them. So, what would sign be if we were doing letters instead of opposite adjacent hypotenuse? y over r. What's cos? x over r and tan would be y over x. And then next year we'll be doing the inverses or reciprocal functions of all those two. Now, with that said, you should memorize these formulas. That's like the understatement of the year. Okay, you need to know these extremely well. Um, but so Katoa, if you know your x, y, that if you can draw it, you guys, the more you know, the less you have to memorize. Now, this one here, example three is going to be on your quiz tomorrow. It will be on your unit exam. Not the same coordinate, but the same question. Now, it says point 15.8 lies on the terminal arm. And it says calculate R and then determine the exact values of the primary trig o no metric ratios. Okay? Now this is a pretty daunting question. Until you see it, then you're going to be like, oh, that's all they wanted. Okay? And then they're going to ask you that in the homework, this question. You're like, oh man, what? Uh -huh. And then I'm going to like show you it's just like example three. Oh, that's all. Yeah. Okay. So 
why do I need to find R? Like, which one of the ratios do I know right now? Could I do quite easy? It's 10, right? Because what's 10? No. Y over X. So what's Y? So 8 over 15. The problem lies is that sine is y over r, and cos is, I should put theta here, right? Theta is cosine. Um, what's cos? x over r. Do you see my problem here? I cannot do those two ratios because I don't know r. But I know this guy that can help me. Well, I don't know him personally. I've heard of him, right? He can help me with it because... We know that r equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, why do I put that plus minus there? Okay? Now remember, if I need you guys to always be, if I have my expectations up here, I think I have to teach with those expectations. If you go to the diploma and you're making little mistakes because I never taught you that you always have to put brackets around coordinates, that you always need a degree sign if you mean degrees, okay? that we always put plus minus when we take the square root, then I didn't do my job. Okay? So if I want everybody getting 100%, I have to teach you how to always get 100%. You always have to be thinking that plus minus. No, I know you get, well, what's the perfect argument for that? <clears throat> Mr. Well, R is always positive, so why should you put that? Because then you wouldn't be in the habit of doing it all the time, and then you're going to screw up sine and cos one time because you didn't put the plus minus. And what does the plus minus there do? It gives you that uneasy feeling at the end that you didn't finish. You didn't make a decision yet. I always want you making a decision at the end. Should it be positive? Should it be negative? Okay? That's what I want. Okay? So... Let's go for that. We've got plus, minus. And again, I'm going to put brackets just because I hate getting these things wrong. X is 15 squared, and Y is 8 squared. Okay, should be writing this down. Now, this gives me plus or minus 289. Is there any square roots in 289? 17. So equals plus or minus 17. So I'm going to say it equals plus 17. Why? Can I say plus? R is always positive. Okay? So then I can come back. I can even write it on here. That's what I do all the time before I actually do. So sine equals y is... This, this is another thing that I do. It just helps me. So sine theta equals 8 over... And cos equals 15 over 17. I didn't do this with the last class, but can you guys all uh, change your calculators to degree mode? So you hit mode. Okay. And can you just go second sine? Because whenever you find an angle, you have to go second sine. Go second sine, 8 divided by 17. And just press enter. What do you get? Not 0.906. What do you get? 28.072 degrees. Does that look like a 28 degree angle? Sort of. Well, why don't you try cos? Do cos 15 over 17. Now, second cos, of course, because every time you find an angle, you always have to use second function. Same answer. Okay. Try 10. Now, 10 is 8 over 15. Okay, now, shouldn't it always give you the same answer, right? Or you screwed something up. So I just taught you a way to make sure you can get it. You got 100 on that question on the exam. Right? Yep. We're going to address that in about five minutes. Okay? Okay, does everybody get how to do this question? Yes? No? Yep. 
always. Always, always, always. I would put that in the top of my study sheet. You guys remember that from last year, sort of, right? Coming. Ever, whenever you're finding angles, you use second cos. Second sine, second tan. Always, okay? And that's going to haunt us all the way through. There's going to be two things that will haunt you. Number one, every time you clear memory, you're in radian mode. So some of you will write your quiz in radian mode tomorrow. Won't go well. And the other thing is you won't go second. Right? You got to go second, then cos if you're looking for an angle. But that's how you can check it and know you got 100%. Okay, let's go two pages to page 150. And I'm kind of going to talk about, hopefully, what Paul was just asking. And if I don't address it here, Paul, then you can just say, no, that's not what I was talking about. Okay, now, we need to find some rules here. Okay, now these rules that we're going to learn at this point are hard, fast rules, just like Sokotoa, that you need to know how to do for every single question. Every one of them, right? So this stuff, what I'm showing you here is really important. Now, let's just go and stick around quadrant one. Okay? Now, quadrant one is x positive. Yep. So let's put a positive there. Is y positive? Is y positive in quadrant one? Yes. Is r positive? Why? It's always positive. Do you know why you always have to question x and y though? Because you know you got to think which quadrant. You never have to question r. It will always be positive. Now remember, sine is y over r. Okay. Cos is x over r. So what is x? Is it positive or negative? Positive, right? R is positive. So if you take a positive, divide by a positive, you will get a positive, okay? So I should, I'll go back to sine quick. Sine's y over r. Do you see how y is positive? r is positive, so positive divided by positive is positive, right? Okay, let's do 10. Now 10, we have... What's the formula for 10? y over x. y is positive. x is positive. Positive divided by positive is a positive. So in quadrant 1, sine, cos, and tan will always be positive. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's walk all the way to quadrant 2. Now, quadrant 2. X, positive or negative? Negative. So put an X down there and a negative. How about Y? Positive. Okay. So sine is Y over R, cos is X over R, and tan is Y over X, right? We know those by now. Okay, sine would be Y over R, so that would be a positive over a Positive, so that's positive. So cos is x over r. x is negative. r is positive. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. Tan is y over x. So y is positive. x is negative, so we get a negative. So the first thing you have to now memorize is in quadrant 1, all of them are positive. In quadrant two, sine is positive, cos is negative, and tan is negative. Okay? You have to know these, and I'm just showing you how they come about. They're not magic. If I just said, you guys remember that in quadrant two, these rows, you're like, okay, yeah, whatever, sure. Yeah, I mean, you're the math teacher. I'll write it down. It's going to be on the test, so I'm going to do it, right? But why? Okay? Here's the why. This is how it came to be. You just divide by your ratios, okay? So now to quadrant three. So sine is y over x, cos is, oh, no, y over r, I mean, x over r, and y over x. Okay, so let's go to our diagram. Remember, this is my x. x would be 
negative. Y would be negative. R will be positive. Did I even do that on the last one? No, I didn't put positive there. Okay, so Y over R. That's a negative over positive, so that's negative. Cos is negative over positive, so that is negative. Tan is y over x, so that's negative over negative, which is positive. Okay, now quadrant four. Now quadrant four, again, here's my x, here's my y. x would be y would be negative, r will be positive. Sine is y over r, x cos is x over r, and tan is y over x. So in this one, y over r, that's a negative over a positive, that's going to be negative, and x over r, that's a positive over a negative, so that's going to be negative positive over positive, I mean, it's going to be positive, and y over x is a negative over a positive, so that's a negative, okay? So, there is everything that you need to know about all of these quadrants. Now, quadrant one is easy to remember, right? That's all of them. Quadrant two Sine is always positive, cos and tan are negative. In quadrant three, sine and cos are negative, tan is positive. In quadrant four, we have sine is negative, cos is positive, tan is negative. Okay? So we need to remember all these. Now, the way I remember it is by starting from quadrant four. There, in, except for quadrant one, do you see how there's only one positive in each one? So I remember, I remember all the positives and the ones that aren't positive are negative, okay? Does that make sense? So in quadrant four, just cos is negative, right? Positive. Just cos is positive. In quadrant one, all are positive. In quadrant two, just sine is positive. Is everybody with me here so far? In quadrant three, just ten is positive. Okay? Yeah, that's the, that's the cat's rule. No, that's the cast rule. Okay? So, starting from quadrant four, it's cast. Now, why is that like a little weird? Because we don't start at quadrant four. It goes one, two, three, four. But the other thing is you can start at quadrant one and there's like add sugar to coffee. Okay? Anything like that. But if you remember those letters, they will tell you which quadrant has which in it. Okay, Sarah, up here. Right? Now, that is where we get what's called the cast rule. Okay? From C-A-S-T. Okay? So, what I do every single time is every question that I get, I do this. That's how I start Okay, and why do I do that? Because that is that entire chart now written down. In quadrant one, they are all going to be positive. In quadrant two, sine is the only one positive. Okay, do you see how it works? So, it is an important rule. Okay, now let's look at example four here. Sine 340. It wants to know, without a calculator, would they be positive or negative? Now, I know that you'd say, I'll just put it in my calculator. 
But where is 340? I'm in quadrant 4. Does everyone... So, what would be the answer? Positive or negative? It will be negative because only cos is positive in quadrant 4. Okay. What about tan to 27? Let's do that one. Which quadrant am I in? Sorry, it will be. Are we getting how we're doing this? Okay. Uh, let's do cos to 35. So I do that. Which quadrant should I be in? Three. So it will be a negative. Okay. Now, we are going to do a question. Now, without knowing your cast rule, not going to go well. Knowing your cast rule makes these pretty easy. So let's go to example five. We're going to do number one. Now, let's do A. Now, let's actually read what the question is. It says, rewrite this trig function as a trig function of an acute angle. What's acute? Less than 90. Do you see how sine 140 is not acute? So it says, rewrite that with it being acute and obviously having the same answer. Okay? Now, here's the way we do them, and I will write down the steps right after we're done. Okay? So, first thing I do is this. Okay? Now, I know that almost takes four seconds out of your life, but it does help you get these things right. Just remember that those people that uh, try to be efficient by skipping steps, that is probably the ultimate in inefficiency because if you don't do the question at all, how long does it take you? Zero seconds. If you take a minute by skipping steps and you get it wrong, how long did it take you? A minute? Who got the same? Who got the mark? Who got the better mark? Neither. So it's more efficient not to do it. Okay, so for efficiency at the sake of cutting corners is it's inefficiency, that's what it is, right? Ask anybody that's done it building a house or whatever, the homeowner comes back and go, that's not the way that it's supposed to be, remember? Or you missed this, you could take it all down, you could spend a day taking it all apart, then another day to put it back. So it always costs you money it always costs you time if you skip if you skimp on things. Now, where am I going to be at? Where's 140? Quadrant 2. So we're actually going to draw 140. Okay. So, and this label this 140. What did I just draw? The rotation angle. Okay. Now, I want this. What is this called? The reference angle. So, what is the reference angle? 40 degrees. Okay. Now, the next thing you do is you put positive sine 40 degrees. Now, why did I put a positive there? Because we're in the second quadrant, sine is positive. Now, can everybody please put sine 140 equals into their calculator? Not second sine, just sine 140 equals. Now press sine 40 equals. Okay, so that's how you can always check them. See, I've rewritten it. You'll, you'll learn this, but um, there's always two answers to every 
trig ratio and your calculator only gives you the one of them when you uh, like if you took that answer you got what answer do you get okay actually I'm not going to confuse you right now but you'll see that it only gives you one of the solutions always the only the other one you can only find by using the cast rule okay now let's do uh, C and then we'll write down our steps so that way you can sort of kind of see the pattern what was the first thing that I did anyone remember draw it and put cast down okay then what did I do next draw the rotation where would I be hanging around in that quadrant again just take it out of there okay so I draw the rotation then what do I do next find the reference next so what is reference angle equal 15 what, potatoes cows what degrees oh, okay let's check it. 15 degrees now my answer will be so I got to use cos again I'm going to put cos 15 but it's negative why Third, second quadrant put in cos 165 equals put in negative cos 15 equals Okay, so before we do one more, what was the first step? So draw, it's probably faster just to go like this. Draw a cast, right? What's the second thing we did? Yeah, draw a rotation angle. The rot angle. Okay, three is... What about reference angle? Find it. Find reference angle, because it's actually already drawn, right? Okay. And then what's the fourth thing? Yeah. Determine sign by using cast rule. Okay. So draw your cast, then draw a rotation angle. Some people aren't writing this down. I guess they know those one. Tell me which one. Uh, determine sign by using cast rule. Okay, so let's do E. 308. Where am I? fourth quadrant okay so we're that's 270 right so let's call 308 right there so I'm going to put 308 degrees okay what is reference reference angle equals 52 degrees now what is the sign what is the sign of cos? It is positive cos 52. Now, what's the first thing people say? Mr. Do I have to put the positive there? Do you know why I put a positive there? It shows I was deliberate about it, and it shows that I checked it. Yes, positive and leaving it totally without anything means the same thing. I know. I've been around, right? But if I do step four I should put a positive there because then I have actually like I have proof that I checked it when I come back and look at it again of course cos 308 equals and cos 52 equals should give you the same answer right okay so we're doing 1 to 11